If you're a fan of this channel, you will have no doubt worked out that I'm a huge fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog series. This is by no means an original take, but I have a problem with the modern Sonic conundrum. There are a huge number of video essays detailing the problems the mascot has had since he left the Mega Drive, and especially his stagnation in the Sonic forces to modern age. But in a nutshell, I mostly agree with them. The character has struggled to recapture his former glory, and though I've enjoyed many of his outings over the past decade, the character and series on its own feels unbelievably uninteresting to me at the moment and I'm genuinely obsessed with the little blue dude. The success of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie has been the true highlight of the decade for the character in my opinion and surprisingly it did so by leaving most of the characters established lore at the door. This proved to me at least that putting forward a clean slate for the character could never be more appropriate if the character really wants a fresh start. Having grown up with the franchise, I am genuinely clamouring for a more mature take on Sonic. I've grown up, I first found the character when I was a child, now I'm 30, a bit depressing, and I want the presentation of Sonic to grow up a bit too. When I say mature, I don't mean edgy, I don't mean a higher age rating, the game should always be suitable for children, and I certainly don't want the character involved in graphic violence. But... I want a game that matches strong gameplay with a world and narrative that actually takes itself somewhat seriously whilst maintaining that Sonic spirit and taking the character to places that are new and interesting. So many elements of the character, his world, his design and his games feel rehashed at present and any attempts at serious storytelling have quite frankly been in a quiet taste let's say. The character is a nostalgic throwback to many but while everyone was keen to take risks with him when he was at his biggest, these risks are seemingly now frowned upon which is understandable when they don't necessarily pay off. A few years back I felt inspired by a video essay I found whilst browsing YouTube. The channel Good Blood created a video about rebooting Sonic the Hedgehog and I found it particularly inspiring. It proposed a new direction for the series and the character and it wasn't one I ever expected to see a fan put forward. Truth be told, I didn't agree with the opinions in the video, some elements I thought misjudged what Sonic should be, but I really appreciated the vision and the effort that had gone into coming up with this new take on Sonic the Hedgehog. The production of the video was incredible and it was fascinating to see the franchise reimagined in such a way. It's unfortunate that toxicity towards the video led to it being taken down, but that video has always stayed with me. Now, that video pretty much inspired the type of content I try to make on YouTube on the whole. But outside of character design retrospectives I make, I've really been clamouring to take that original idea and put my own spin on it. So today I'm going to talk you through my idea for a Sonic the Hedgehog reboot, a new game that can stand on its own and would take Sonic in a new direction. I'm going to refer to some Sonic mediums from the past, what they did wrong and what they did right, as well as draw from modern gaming influences that I think Sonic would be wise to learn from. Some of that will be similar to Good Blood's take, specifically influenced from modern indies and platforming. If you're really against Sonic changing stuff up and hated his video, I don't know. I really recommend switching this one off. You're going down, Mark! As a disclaimer, I don't think that this is the solution to Sonic. In fact, I don't think a true solution is really possible. Sega have taken the series in so many different directions that they have created a situation where everyone's needs can't really be truly satisfied. Sonic has split off into so many new roads and avenues that there are different strains that people will identify with and gravitate towards. And that's okay. It just makes it harder to please everyone of which this video most definitely will not. This video is basically fan fiction and I am the consumer of it. I just want to take you along for the ride. I have absolutely no qualms with if you agree or disagree with me, just let me know in the comments what you think. If you hate the idea, give me a down vote and if you like it, give me an up vote. It'd be really interesting to see what the general perspective actually is. Now, before we get going, I will say this multiple times, but I am absolutely astounded by the support I have received from my subscribers in the preparation of this video, specifically the talented folks over on my Discord channel. Thank you, all of you. You've made making this video a dream come true, and I cannot thank you enough. Please make sure you check out the pages of all those I mention, and please do give this channel a sub if you enjoy the direction this video heads in. Chapter 1 the concept. One of the biggest issues I have with Sonic currently is that of its world, set of characters and tone. Something isn't right. 
There are no real stakes and any element of seriousness is generally made a mockery of with Sonic's constant dad jokes. As well as this, there's this odd sense of continuity where the current games act as if this Sonic has been the same character throughout the series entirety. It's bizarre to me that we are expected to believe that classic Sonic suddenly came of age and started talking like a human being. It's ridiculous to try and believe that these are the same characters. Not to mention that some games are ridiculously fantasy-like with Sonic-styled zones whereas others force in realistic elements, locales and characters that even include the president and the military. It's a hot mess when you lump it all in together and I don't think the inclusion of these settings and characters has been particularly effective outside of some nice level designs and music tracks. The one instance where this was not the case was with Sonic Boom. Obviously the developers got a bit shunted, understatement of the year, with this one and the game itself was a disaster. Being developed for PS4 and Xbox One before being forced into a Wii U release making optimization of the engine an all but impossible task but outside of its huge amount of problems it at least established its own canon which is one thing I'm going to be following on from wiping the slate relatively clean. In his history of games Sonic has had a huge cast of characters which has set him apart from his original outings. There have been musings of resetting this a number of times throughout Sonic's history and it never really happened. Sonic 06 was originally rumoured to be a Sonic reboot with him as the lead character and nobody else. Eventually, we got so many playstyles that the game is a pseudo adventure free. Yes, I know this is a hard pill to swallow. Whilst other games in the series have also focused more on purely Sonic gameplay, they've still fallen back on these familiar characters and their tropes to force the plot along. Tails, the genius sidekick, Knuckles, the idiot, Amy, the obsessive fangirl, Eggman, the often villainous, sometimes heroic foil. It's become played out. So I'm hitting the reset button. Sonic is here and so is Eggman. The most important thing for me in this concept is to create a new world for these characters to be in conflict with each other and to do this in a way where we actually feel for this character and the adventure he needs to go on. Let's look at the plot of the original Sonic the Hedgehog for one moment. While the game itself doesn't explicitly explain much and this is likely just happenstance for the sake of a western release, the game's instruction manual did explain a bit of story. Here's an excerpt. Crush Dr. Robotnik. Dr. Ivo Robotnik, the mad scientist, is snatching innocent animals and turning them into evil robots. Only one tough dude can put an end to the demented scientist fiendish scheme. It's Sonic, the real cool hedgehog with a spiked haircut and power sneakers that give him super speed. That's a loose plotline as a basis, but it's very effective and easy to understand. Eggman is the evil scientist messing with the environment and nature itself, and his wrongdoing is undone by Sonic, the cool dude with a pair of trainers that runs fast. This has always felt like the backbone of Sonic from his original era to me, and other media built upon this template, whether it was going for the Freedom Fighters approach or giving the hero some unorthodox Orthodox origins. At his heart, whether you like it or not, he was always a bit of an eco-warrior. This plotline was abandoned in favour of quite random elements the further the character went, and instead Sonic games became focused on giant monsters, government cover-ups, time travel, and lacklustre plots that barely even took themselves seriously. I'm going to use this paragraph as my basis, but apply it to the modern day quite literally. I want it to be relatable so we can see ourselves in Sonic. To start with, Let's look at the settings and the plot. So we have South Island, the original setting for the original Sonic the Hedgehog game, though this time it's an established human society. A large city makes up a majority of the island, I literally have West City from Dragon Ball in my head, and when we get a look at it, this is what we see. A society not too dissimilar from our own, shops, billboards, and even fast food brands, except there's one key difference. They are all owned by one parent company, Eggbotnik Industries. Here's a notable bit of billboard branding for the new release of trainers, the Eggbotnik Airs. The general public can't wait to get a hold of these new running trainers that can apparently withstand the highest of speeds. The development is a bit of a con though, like anyone could actually go that fast anyways. Outside of the city, Sonic's home is on the outskirts. It's a lush green forest full of wildlife, plants and colour. It's Sonic's home, but Sonic isn't currently Sonic as we know him. More on that shortly. On the outskirts of the forest is the HQ of that company I mentioned earlier, Eggbotnik Industries. It's a tall, imposing grey building with a significant factory and production area too. It looks over the 
the forest and casts a dark looming shadow over a solid chunk of the wildlife. You can imagine who is leading this business, but for now, let's move on with the plot. With this setting in mind, I think an origin story is appropriate for this new Sonic and new world. We get scenes of Eggbotnik Industries moving out, using resources from the forest and endangering the wildlife that lives within it. Some of them are also being captured by machines, trucks and robots. These animals, while Toon Light gonna sense via their graphic style, are clearly real animals. They aren't pseudo-human animal hybrids that have been present in the Sonic franchise previously. After we see the chaos that's been caused to the ecosystem, we get some establishing shots within Eggbotnik Industries itself. There's tons of experiments being done to animals, some larger animals are being turned into robots, we even see chicken coops with the eggs going straight into the fast food production line. As we go through the lab, we see more experiments. This includes a room full of hedgehogs running on treadmills. They are all wearing prototype miniature trainers because the doctor is into some weird experimentary shit. I may have gone too far in a few places. As we go further and further into experimental rooms, we get our introduction to Sonic. He's here in the flesh, in a similar appearance to how we know him now. He's being held in place on a treadmill by a large machine. His vitals are being monitored. He has a drip feeding him water and can be seen on a large screen alongside the miles per hour the treadmill is moving at. He is rocking the new Eggbotnik airspeed trainers and this is an obvious test of the speeds these trainers can actually withstand. As well as holding Sonic in place, the machine can also be seen holding a blue serum that has been filtered into Sonic. The entire room is littered with vials of this, which has been acting as a booster for Sonic's speed. We see one more vial filtered into Sonic's DNA as he continues running. With a sudden increase in speed, Sonic pushes the capabilities of the treadmill so much, with the speed rising to an uncontrollable level, that he eventually destroys the treadmill. Breaking free from the machine, he comes to his senses. He runs rampant through the room in a flash, destroying the remaining vials, zips out the room, confused but aware he needs to get out of here. He zooms down a long corridor as fast as he can, tearing down an Eggman Industries banner, and manages to zip line down to safety outside the building, using a cable that was bringing resources up into the factory. After escaping and getting his bearings together, Sonic looks around at the environment and the different areas of the forest, being worn down by the machines. He puts a piece of cloth he's pulled down round his neck as a scarf in reminder of his mission and heads off into the forest to start the takedown of this industry, whilst a security camera monitors him enthusiastically. That is the concept in a nutshell for this game, Sonic finding ways to bring down Eggbotnik Industries from the outside zones of interference before heading back to the HQ for a final showdown. This is Sonic Sonic the Hedgehog Spirit, a tale of how Sonic tries to bring peace back to his home whilst bringing the spirit of this original concept back to the series. Chapter 2 The Characters and Art Style the look and feel of this game's characters and world is very important to my vision. I'm not a game dev and my background is with storytelling, theatre and video making, so I think that this will be my best way of communicating the game's ideas. Starting with Sonic, I think his characterization and design is incredibly important to the story I want to tell. I've always liked Sonic best in the classic games purely because of the way in which he interacts with the world around him. It is clearly because of the technical limitations of the time, just look at the amount of TV shows that had him yapping all over the stop, but the way he stood in silence with attitude always illustrated to me perfectly what this character was all about. I want this silence carried over into this new Sonic with just a tiny bit more going on under the surface. He's still cool and calm, chewing the scenery, stylish in his moves and full of attitude, but his silence also hammers in his somewhat noble task and story. He is alone in this world, quite literally, as a solo anthropomorphic animal and he feels a true connection with his home and ecosystem. His silence is a reminder of his task, which he is taking very seriously. He's a character that has been dumped into a world that is being visibly destroyed around him, and I think that quite honestly makes him a bit more relatable to everyone from the get-go, whilst also playing back to some of the character's strengths as an eco-friendly freedom fighter. When I think back to my best design videos for Sonic, I can't help but mention how he appeared in the intro to Sonic CD, as I've always sung the praises of this game's intro and how it portrayed the character silently in this fashion, and it has remained the basis of the design in Sonic Spirit. I briefed my fantastic Discord artists to reimagine the Sonic of Sonic CD's intro with new takes on this classic design, and through experimentation, this design began to take on its own identity. Sonic Boom added a scarf to Sonic's design, and while I hated it to begin with, it's something that certainly helped him stand out. The fan series, Sonic Skylines, took this to new heights, and it's definitely influenced this design somewhat. This Sonic wears a piece of cloth from an Eggbotnik Industries banner he tore down as a constant reminder of what he is fighting for. We've played around with a number of 
designs and art styles, but in keeping with contemporary Sonic, I know I've grown fond of Movie Sonic's blue arms, and this has been incorporated into the design too. Overall, I've really been inspired by the look and feel of Rayman Legends and Origins, and this is something that definitely factored into some of my favourite design developments through the project. Much more emphasis is placed on Sonic's trainers this time around, with them being presented as a sought after super durable trainer. Though that original quote from the original game mentions his high speed shoes, it's never really been mentioned outside of that to my knowledge. I love this idea that in this world, Sonic has to use them to take down Eggman. They are the only creation that can help him channel his newfound sense of speed, and there's a bit of poetic justice in Sonic helping fight for the forest using Eggman's own creation against him. But more so than this, these have specifically been created to withstand the highest of speeds. Sonic is ironically the only one who can use them to their true abilities, but he also needs them. Without them on his feet, he wouldn't be able to run without injuring himself, which adds a nice level of vulnerability to the character. Equally as important as Sonic to the success of this story is Eggman himself and it is where I want to add some more layers to his mad scientist persona. That is what this Eggman is ultimately, that hasn't changed, but the way in which he goes about this publicly very much has. Eggman is the CEO of Eggbotnik Industries, a company that has 100% commercial presence over the entirety of South Island and only one staff member. The rest is automated by his huge robotic workforce. Just imagine a company that has a hold of almost every industry in the world. Oh wait, it's too real. His Eggbotnik logo can be seen littered all over the island, and it's a prominent force appearing just as much as any big corporate brand in real life. On the surface, he is super charismatic, a great public speaker, and a renowned technological mastermind. But underneath his facade is a man obsessed with pushing the boundaries of nature and science. He isn't presented here for gags and cheap laughs, he is genuinely cold and threatening, and the ease at which he can go from charming entrepreneur to emotionless scientist is alarming to witness. This Eggman has always been obsessed with pushing boundaries and proving his own worth. But ironically, despite his mastered experiments in the realm of robots, he is now incredibly bored. He has driven out every other business and competition he has ever had through the growth of Eggbotnik Industries, and he is desperate to create a challenge for himself. This boredom has led to a pursuit of a foe and a challenge. He takes many animal lives in his pursuit of creating a supersonic animal, but the closest he comes to perfection is his creation of Sonic the Hedgehog himself. After Sonic escapes, Eggman hatches together a plan to hunt him for sport. It's the most alive and excited he's felt in years, and he'll go to any extent to prove his superiority over this new creature he's created. One way in which Eggman seeks out this superiority is with the development of a Metal Sonic to combat Sonic on the battlefield, intentionally designing the character to look similar to our protagonist as a way of imposing psychological fear over him. This time around, Metal Sonic uses a colour palette more akin to Silver Sonic as present in Sonic 2. I'd always found the lack of colour felt a bit more threatening and clunky. The silver and greys are something I'd like applied to Eggman's forces altogether. Clunky, scrap metal styled robots that are the complete opposite to Sonic and the world he is trying to protect. I think there's potential to make Metal Sonic a bit more complex as the story progresses along, mixing in some beats from the character's history in the Sonic Over movie, as well as the Gamma plotline from Sonic Adventure. Despite this though, on the surface, he's a very intimidating foe whilst telling his own quiet story of acceptance. What is he? What is he doing to the world around him? And does he regret the part he is playing in this game? Now for the hard bit, the gameplay. This is definitely going to be a challenge for me to convey. I've already said I'm no game dev and I don't have the faintest understanding of how game dev works. But what I do know is how I think Sonic needs to evolve. I know this will be a controversial point for many, but I still believe that Sonic at its core should remain a 2D platformer with a race to the finish style formula. This is core to the Sonic experience. I just think it needs to evolve beyond the way we currently experience it. There's a reason I've played through Sonic the Hedgehog 2 so many times. When I think of games to draw influence from, there are a number of games to look at. Both Ori games are a great starting point. While the games are technically Metroidvanias, they are also groundbreaking in the way they establish mood through the use of setting and silence, the set pieces and chase sequences, highlighting some of the best fast-paced 2D side-scrolling I've ever experienced. Speaking of set pieces, Rayman Origins and Legends had these in abundance too. The chase style levels are some of the funnest parts of the game, and the way in which the right trigger is implemented to sprint is a seamless mechanic which perfectly suits the pace in which the gameplay moves at. Obviously, there's a big influence from this game in terms of art style as well, so I'll point you back at the super old top platformers video I made before my channel took off. 
Of course, I can't speak about speed in 2D gameplay without mentioning Celeste, which is personally to me the best platformer of all time. Celeste made use of such perfect trial and error precision gameplay that I think could be mixed in with Sonic's style, high speed hijinks with ease. Lightning fast reactions would lend itself well to Sonic's skill set, and while we've seen this established first in Sonic Unleashed, which don't get me wrong, I absolutely love, I think there's merit in exploring this style of gameplay in a less boost heavy gameplay style. With these influences in mind, I think a mixture of these three games with a Sonic style influence would be a huge hit. Easier said than done, I know. I'd envision it being made up of a few different core gameplay styles. Similar to the classic games of old, we have a side-scrolling 2D gameplay reminiscent of the classics. However, we streamline gaining momentum by adding a sprint button and give a bit of variety to levels by allowing Sonic some of his modern features, such as wall jumping and sliding under platforms. No boost mechanics though. I'd like there to be a mixture between high-octane sessions where momentum plays a factor, but I'd also like to slow down occasionally so that we can enjoy some traditional platforming too. The reason behind giving Sonic the cloth as part of his character design was to give him a new zipline styled mechanic. I've mentioned the chase sequences from Ori and similar styles of gameplay would definitely work here. Just imagine being chased by a huge Eggman drilling robot while Sonic dashes through enclosed spaces in order to survive in high octane action. The zipline and grinding features would be expanded upon in these sections with fast paced platform switching. Switching between grinding and ziplining could be a seamless feature making these sections all about reaction times. Rather than shoved in as a 30 second end of stage face roll, Eggman should send his heaviest and most advanced sets of machinery after Sonic, coming after him with all types of his crazed environmental destruction toolkit. These should be much bigger deals wherein you use platforming and maneuvering to take them down. As for the levels themselves, rather than retread Green Hill Zone and Chemical Plant, the world of Sonic Spirit is very new. That's not to say that there aren't similarities, but thematically I want to mix together the feelings certain classic zones gave you to create new stunning locations cows that have been butchered by Eggman. I'd like to remove typical Sonic tropes such as springs, checkpoint poles and end of level signs to not add a level of disconnect to these worlds. I want the world to feel like it's alive as much as Sonic is. These features can still exist in gameplay but maybe via the world itself. Mushroom Hill Zone is a great example of this being achieved but let's go even further with this concept. Most of the game is contained within the central forest locale where most of the wildlife resides, with Illumin Eggbotnik Industries Force interfering with each different set Setting, kind of like Planet Wisp in Sonic Colours, but with a much more harsh reality. After Sonic escapes the building in the intro, this is a rough format I could see the game following. Sonic enters a forest utopia. Lush and green, this vibrant setting is full of trees and other plants, so there's a huge presence of harsh grey machinery cutting through. As Sonic progresses through the landscape, the environments become blander, devoid of colour, and full of dangerous shot machinery similar to that of Sonic 1's final zone and Mushroom Hill Zone Act 1. Sonic moves on to an oiled filled beach. Think of a lush beach similar to Sonic Adventure's Emerald Coast mixed with a catastrophic oil spill. Drilling apparatus are spread out all over and mining into the ocean's surface. Sonic sets out to stop this from happening whilst platforming using oil spills and explosions to aid his platforming abilities. Sonic goes from here to the mountaintop mines and excavation area, whilst here an Eggbotnik Industries Air Force follows him into the mountaintops, chasing him through alternating settings in the outdoor mountain quarries and interior mining facilities. A boss battle sees Sonic combat the Air Force through mountaintop traversal. Sonic arrives at South Island City next, a brightly lit city full of corporate ads and product placements. Sonic is chased through here by Metal Sonic who has been periodically tracking him up until this point. Following his trip to the city, Sonic makes it to Eggbotnik Industries itself. Part 1 Starting with a warehouse that ships out the trainers, Sonic works through here to the offices, busting through production lines, shipping units and a number of worker eggbots. Unfortunately, in an accident, he loses his shoes, which end up going into the shipping line, meaning he can't make use of his trademark speed. Don't worry, he finds some socks at least. Part 2. Sonic makes his way to the offices, full of high-tech robots fulfilling various corporate business roles. He eventually makes it through Eggman's lab and to the top floor wherein Eggman resides in his private rooftop office. Eggman gives him a new pair of egg Botnix as he wants to test Sonic's skills personally. A final showdown is presented between Sonic and Metal Sonic, and while Sonic takes Metal to his limits, he actually can't beat him. When it comes to delivering the final blow however, Metal just can't do it. There's a common ground that the two characters find within each other, and they both know that their fight is about more than themselves. Metal feels connected to the environment he's explored throughout the game, and spares Sonic outright. 
Eggman has had enough and decides it's time to end the game. He reveals an army of duplicate Metal Sonics with significantly less emotional capabilities. They destroy Metal Sonic in a metal onslaught before cornering Sonic himself. This awakens a burning rage in Sonic who gears up to take down Eggman himself wherein the true final showdown takes place. This final showdown sees a forest set ablaze with Eggman pushed to his limits and trying to burn Sonic alive. Chasing him through previous settings from the game, Eggman destroys a huge amount of things in his path, aided by an army of metal Sonic duplicates, who Sonic destroys in platforming feats, making use of the world around him to do so. Finally, Sonic turns the tables and stops being chased, defeating Eggman himself in one blow. Once the dust has settled, the army of Eggbots ceases to function, metal sonics fall to ground en masse, the forest is peaceful. The game ends with Sonic tossing his trainers into the rubble of the Eggbotnik Industries building, signifying he no longer feels the need to run, and instead he simply walks off back into the forest, which he hopes can now begin to rebuild itself. We end with a shot taken at an undisclosed time in the future and we can see plant life beginning to grow over the previously defeated robots, warehouse and end with a final image of a memorial to the original Metal Sonic wherein a flower has emerged. That's a super rough concept of how I could see this game rolling out. I think the emphasis would be on fleshing out these levels and boss fights, coming up with interesting moments for Sonic to slow down and take in the scenery and let the mood be set. Chapter 4 Conclusion in a nutshell, that is my concept for a Sonic the Hedgehog reboot, a game that takes itself seriously whilst presenting fast engaging platforming and an important message of humankind destroying our own world. Now I'm sure this video is going to draw some criticism, obviously this concept is massively inspired by other 2D titles from recent years, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Sonic is a character that pretty much can fit anywhere, the movie is a huge example of this succeeding and changing his core gameplay up ever so slightly to draw from modern influences and styles of gameplay that other games have established could be a great way of reinvigorating the spirit of him as a fast platformer character. All the while, a slightly more serious tone and focus on character I think would give us drive to actually care about the game we're playing through. Sonic feels like a real missed opportunity over the past decade. We've got cutting edge graphics, games that make me cry without the main character ever speaking a word, and platformers have evolved beyond the scope that I ever thought would be possible. It's plausible for Sega to do something like this with Sonic, especially given how beloved he actually is. There is no problem with Sonic continuing to be this, don't get me wrong, I'd buy Mania 2 in a heartbeat, but I just can't help but look at AAA Sonic entries and wonder what could have been and what could be. So that's it from me today guys, but what did you think? Did you love the idea? Did you hate it? Would you do something differently yourself? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you to those of you who have stuck with me for this video. It's easily the most effort and time that I've put into a project of this nature and I really do hope that shows. Please do not think that I think my opinion is more important than anyone else's re Sonic. It's not, it's a super fan's perspective at the end of the day, but this has been an absolute joy to write. I think I got in as much as I could and it's easily the most passionate I think I've ever been about the development of a video. I hope the idea came across as well as I wanted it to. I'm aware that most of the things I say in this video from a game dev perspective probably mean nothing, but it's an idea that I felt I had to present. A massive thank you goes out to all those who helped put this project together on my Discord page. This project legitimately would have been nothing without any of you. I've put a link to each artist's respective pages in the description and on screen currently. Please check them out, they definitely deserve it. They're a hugely talented bunch of people. I hope none of you were disappointed if something you made didn't make it in, but please know that I did all I could to feature anything that matched with the idea I wanted to present. As well as that, a huge thank you goes to my patrons who support me each month, with a special shout out going to Doug Slade, Proggy Froggy and David Hernandez, who are donating at the top tier. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so on Patreon.